Welcome to the Startup Competitors Podcast, where we talk with early stage entrepreneurs to understand what information they use to inform product roadmap, strategy, and market differentiation. Welcome to the Startup Competitors Podcast. Today we have Mike Hurley, co founder and CEO of Warmup. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. It's good to be here. All right, man, let's start with a warm up pitch. All right. Warm up is, is an app that helps uh, sales teams drive and track referral revenue. We help generate warm leads for sales teams. So would you like me to kind of talk about where the idea came from? Yes, let's let's start there and then also try to hit on the other side of where the idea came from. Talk a little bit about like the actual user experience. If I'm a salesperson, what, what am I doing when I'm interacting with your software? Okay, cool. So I'll go ahead and kind of start where the idea came from really quick. That'll give you some give you some context. So I've been in sales for a little over 10 years, been in software for a little over six. What I found in my career is that sales reps often don't ask for referrals. So if they do that thing at all, they're kind of doing it ad hoc and haphazard at best. Oftentimes, they're not really sure how and when to ask for referrals. And so I went out there and I started talking to a lot of sales reps. That's kind of, you know, we, we kind of affirmed that, that belief was true. And then we started talking to their sales managers. And what we found is that sales managers wanted their teams to be asking for referrals, but it was more or less just a soapbox speech. They weren't really sure how many referrals were being asked for and then how many referrals were actually being received. So that was kind of the uh, the genesis for the idea of the product is, can we develop a piece of software that gives sales managers visibility into how often their team is asking for referrals and how many referrals are being received? And then that visibility and that platform can help drive and, and track that referral revenue. And really what it was about at an organization level is we wanted to help turn referral asks into a type of outbound activity that was similar to emails and calls, something that could be forecasted and relied upon by the company uh, to create another predictable stream of revenue. So that's kind of the genesis of the idea. If we want to go ahead and uh, transition into kind of how sales reps use it, is that that was the next thing you want to talk about, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Cool. So when I thought about how I asked for referrals, what I thought about was typically I would email somebody like yourself, right? And I would say, hey, Mike, how's it going? I was wondering if you might be open to making a referral for me, right? And then I would provide some additional context. Uh, if you were an existing customer, I might say, hey, really appreciate you uh, you know, having been a customer the last year. It seems like you've gotten a lot of value out of the product. Is this something you might be open to doing for? Uh, for me, right? Making a referral for me. And so that was my normal process. And I started to think about how could we, how could we maybe build that into a piece of software to essentially give a sales reps and a sales rep an out of the box process that would make it easy for them to understand how and when to ask for referrals. Specifically, this is the how part. So a sales rep will log into our software today. They typically will load in their customer list or we'll pull it in from Salesforce. And then what we make it easy for them to do is simply ask for referrals. So either they will send out one-off emails one at a time, or they will execute a email campaign through the software. And all of those emails that are going out are essentially asking, hey, would you be open to making a referral for me? So today, uh, the way that people respond to that is either they just respond like you normally do in an email, or they'll, uh, there's a yes button that they'll click in that email. If they click the yes button, warmup will actually automatically send them uh, a referral template that they can then use to make a referral for you. This is a bit hard to explain right over a podcast, but essentially at that point, your existing customer or your or this person that you're asking for a referral, they have this template that they can click on. We, there's a button in that email that they can click on and it loads a fully pre-written email that they can then send to somebody in their network. What we're doing on the back end at that point is we're tracking that that your sales rep has asked for referrals and how many times we're tracking any referrals that they get. If you were to follow through and make a referral for me, it's going to create an opportunity or a new contact or a lead in Salesforce. That's the CRM we integrate with today. The idea here is, is that we're trying to track the entire life cycle of a referral for the sales rep. So I'll go ahead and stop there for a second. I just threw a lot at you. Do you have any questions about that? It's great. Yeah. Super specific. I love that. Um, <laughs> Give me a feeling for current status of the business. How big are you guys? How many employees? How many customers? Revenue, fundraising, anything you want to share or can share to help somebody who's listening understand where you guys are? Yeah, sure. So uh, team-wise, we're, we're a pretty small team. We have uh, we have a few people working the business, uh, an engineer, um, myself, 
Uh, I'm really handling customer onboarding and support and sales. Uh, we have a part-time product manager, and then we have uh, one full-time software engineer that's working in the business currently. So that's the team. It's a good team. Kind of cover the different areas that you need to cover to get a software product company off the ground. And uh, customer-wise, uh, we have 19 customers today, and we have right around 24,000 in ARR. So right around 2,000 a month reoccurring coming in. Um, we're very proud of that, uh, that revenue and that customer base. There, there's a wide range of customers. Some of them are very large. So we, uh, we recently signed a contract with a company that every new week they have 900 new customers and they're using, <laughs> they're going to be using warm up to ask those 900 new customers for referrals. And so we're really excited about that. And then we have a number of customers that it's just, you know, it's a one to two person team. They're using the platform to ask for referrals every time they close a new deal and to ask for referrals on a quarterly basis when they check in with them. Those are two very different use cases. Uh, they're both totally valid opportunities to ask for referrals. So that, that's kind of where we're at customer-wise, revenue-wise, and team-wise. It's a really interesting time uh, in the business because we're still kind of exploring which use cases garner the best adoption, which yeah. use cases make our customers the most happy. And that's even more complicated by the fact that with referrals, right, referrals are nuanced by industry. For example, in yeah. sports and entertainment, we have a minor league baseball team that we're working with and their customers are re ready and willing and very happy to make referrals. And they get a lot of referrals from our system because people love to tell their friends and family that they have a guy or a gal that is their ticket sales professional and they like to make referrals for that person. I think for a number of reasons, right? You want your friends and family to go to a baseball game with you. It's an easy referral to make. Most people love going to baseball games, right? And so helping this, the ticket sales reps at that organization ask for referrals is... Uh, it's pretty low barrier in entry. Yeah, exactly. Versus you should buy some life insurance. Right. <laughs> yeah. Life insurance is a little bit more tricky. Definitely, there's a stigma associated with it. So that yeah, that's a, that's a good contrast. Talk to me a little bit about the that dichotomy between the the larger company that's getting 900 new customers a week versus the smaller company that you know is uh, one or two people and presumably only getting a couple of new referral requests each week so because in my mind that's a that's a pretty big dichotomy when it when it comes to thinking mm -hmm. through that enterprise sale versus the smaller boutique sale and the features you would create and what customer support looks like and what integration yeah. looks like and like all that kind of stuff at what point do you think I'd just be interested in your thoughts at what point do you think you have to make a choice and which of those you're going to go after do you think you even have to make that choice do you think you can support them both well how are you guys thinking through that right now yeah so i i, I tend to think about it a lot from an adoption standpoint I'm actually going to introduce kind of a third alternative into this this line of thinking. So you have, so frankly, the companies that have one to two users and they're asking for referrals on like kind of an, they have one to two users and they're asking for referrals on an ad hoc basis. Those adoptions a lot tougher because they're just, there are fewer opportunities to ask for referrals when you only have, you know, one to two users, there's less value being generated overall over the course of the year. That's a much tougher use case. I kind of see that use case maybe going away over time. To be totally honest, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you a use case that we've just recently kind of started to to pilot and explore, and that's the use case where you have an entire sales team of well, let's say five to ten account executives, and they are each account exec or each sales rep is winning and losing between ten to twenty deals a month. So they might win five deals and they might lose 15, right? That's pretty normal. If you're in a high volume sales environment, right? You're, you've got a lot of deals in the pipeline. So one version of our service is we integrate with Salesforce, right? We integrate with their CRM and Salesforce essentially tells us when they've won a deal or lost a deal. And then what we're doing is we're prompting them via email. Uh, hey, it's, you just we saw you just closed out a deal. It's time to ask for a referral. And so... There's a button in that email that goes to the sales rep and it says, hey, do you want to ask them for a referral? And if they click the button, it will automatically send out a referral ask on their behalf based on a template that they've set up inside warmup. That use case, they don't have to, the sales rep doesn't have to log in to actually execute that referral ask. And then everything kind of happens behind the scenes without them having to log into any software. So 
Because at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do is help organizations and sales teams and sales reps form a habit of doing something new that they were not doing previously. So if you want somebody to form a habit, you have to understand what the queue is, right? What the queue is, you've just closed the deal, whether you won it or you lost it. Or, um, and then the routine is I get this email from warm up prompting me, reminding me that I need to do this thing. And I click the button if I want to send out the referral ask. And then everything kind of happens from there. And then the reward is around 20% of the time, I get an email introduction or referral that pops into my inbox. And that reward creates a craving that then drives the habit loop over and over again. And the reason why I really like that use case is that, you know, if you've got a team of, uh, you know, at least 10 sales reps and they're each asking for 10 referrals every month, right? Because there's at least 10 opportunities to do that thing. Now you've got 100 referral asks that happen every month. And over the course of the year, that's 1,200 referral asks. And what we've seen on the platform is a referral rate of 20% on average. It's actually closer to 22%, but 20% gives us a nice round number to think about here. So if you have 1,200 referral asks that go out, 20% is 240, right? 240 referrals that have now just been generated. And if you're a sales manager or VP of sales, right, you know your conversion rates. And so if you get 240 referrals that have been added to your pipeline, you know that a certain percentage of those will become meetings, a certain percentage of those will become demos and then new customers. Do you have a feel for how much more valuable a referral client is versus a non-referral client? So in that in that smaller funnel, are are they more likely to close, less likely to close? Do you have, do you have any data on that yet? The research that we've been able to find out there is that it has the highest conversion rate of any lead source. There is, uh, I've got it right here, actually. Uh, I was looking at it this morning, uh, but there's a, maybe we can share it in the comments or something like that yeah. after the podcast, but there's a really great article where a, a firm looked at the data, the lead data, the conversion data for, I forget the number of companies they looked at, but they looked at, you know, what was the conversion rates across all the different lead sources, you know, for these, you know, 50 companies. And what they found is that customer referrals and employer referrals had the highest conversion rate of any lead source. I think it was around 68%. So what that ends up meaning is that cost of, if you, if you spent more time focusing on referrals, if you had a process to drive and drive referral revenue and drive more referrals in your pipeline, you could in theory decrease, you know, your, your cost of customer acquisition. We've had a number of customers actually where that's been the case. So now I'm going to ask you a psychology question, <laughs> get into my head a little bit. All right. So I'm a sales guy some days. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and I actually have a weird allergic reaction when I think of warm up because for me, I, like when I close a deal, mm -hmm. it's weird for me to then think, I just closed Mike. Now I'm going to ask him to refer me. I'm yep. sure you hear this all the time, oh, right? Yep. yep. Versus like, okay, I closed this account three months ago. We've been killing it and mm -hmm. doing great work. Now I want to go ask this guy for a referral, right? right? So like, talk to me a little bit about that. Because for, for me as a sales guy, it puts me back a little bit to, to think like, oh, I just closed a deal. I've never done anything for this person. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to ask them to refer me. What's either wrong with my psychology or is that just the type of thing that I'm selling versus if I was selling something else, like share that with me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. The sales process should be a educational process for your prospect, right? It should be, a, it should be a, in most times and with certain products and services, it is a very educational process where you're essentially teaching them about the differences between your services and your team and why they should work with you or, or spend money with you as opposed to another venue or another product or another service. You're, you're doing something for them that is valuable in and of itself. And hopefully they like and respect you at the end of the sales process. Anytime that value is perceived or delivered, uh, I think is a great opportunity to ask for a referral. That's, that's my own personal opinion. I think if you get to the end of the sales process, if they respect you and they like you and they feel like they've learned something from you, I think as a, as a sales professional, you're well within your rights at that point to say, uh, you know, hey, are you, are you happy you bought this thing? Did you enjoy the sales process with me? You know, is there anybody else you know that might find what we do valuable or helpful to them? I guess when it comes down to it, there's a certain percentage of people that no matter how the sales process went, they're never going to feel comfortable making that referral. Yeah. And that's okay, right? And I and, and I will say this, the caveat is you shouldn't treat everybody the same, right? So certainly throughout the sales process, if you start to identify that this is the type of personality that wouldn't react well to that referral ask, 
uh, don't make that referral ask. But I do think that there's a large percentage of the population that they want to help you at the end of the sales process. They'd be willing to rather, but they have to be prompted. They have to be asked. I hope that I hope that makes some sense. Fantastically uh, well answered. So let's pivot to competition. Okay. When you think of competitors for warm up, what comes to mind? So there is a lot of competitors that focus on the lead side of thing uh, when it comes to relationships. There's a lot of products out there, companies like LinkedIn, right? Uh, obviously, a social network. There's Nudge. There's there's Alignable. There, there's there's a lot of products out there that are heavily focused on, you know, who are the relationships that your customers have, and helping you under identify those relationships so that you can ask your customers and your contacts for referrals to those people. So, the way that we kind of thought about the marketplace is. There's a lot of that stuff already out there. There's also a lot of uh, email marketing platforms out there, right? And we don't want to get caught up in being confused with those organizations or those services. There are not a lot of sales enablement tools out there that help sales reps understand how and when to ask for a referral. Uh, We really want to come in at the end of the sales cycle to help them ask for referrals uh, at the end of the sales cycle after they've either closed or won, closed lost or closed won a deal and help them form a habit around asking for a referral at that time uh, with a process that we know works. And I think that that differentiates us, right? We don't want to be a uh, email campaign platform because then, you know, people start to ask us what makes you different than HubSpot or, you know, any one of the other uh, large platforms out there where you can easily do that thing. So speaking more broadly, there are a lot of different ways you can ask for referrals, right? You can do it via phone, you can do it via text, you can do it via email. One of the questions I get asked most often is, you know, why wouldn't, uh, why wouldn't I just, you know, put together an email campaign and do this thing manually, right? I think if you have an existing customer base, uh, you should do that thing. You should make sure that you're asking all your customers for a referral at least once a year, right? But not everybody has a large existing customer base. And even, and even if that's what you're going to do, people often aren't sure, you know, how to make that ask to their customer base, right? They're not sure uh, when to do it how to do it and how to make it easy on their customers. So one of the things I run into a lot is <laughs> people will say, well, why can't I just do this thing manually? And then, you know, I'll, I will tactfully and respectfully turn that around and say, well, why aren't you doing it today? Right. And then we kind of have a conversation around maybe what are the knowledge gaps that they have or technology gaps or, you know, anything of that nature. You bootstrapped your way to this point, correct? We did. Yeah. Yep. So play out for me. Uh, six months, maybe. So let's go six, 12 months into the future. When you think of where this product is evolving to, so, so uh, maybe 12 to 24 months is a better way. Cause then by then you're rich, uh, cause it's going to turn off <laughs> a couple hundred K in monthly recurring revenue. Uh, but cause I just want to get you outside of present constraints, yeah, right? Sure. So, so let's go 12 to 24 months, 12 to 24 months in the future when it's raining cash and you can make strategic product investments. Where do you think you're making those investments on this platform? Is it A-B testing on messaging? Is it finding new places within a customer lifecycle to ask for a referral? Is it different ways to engage a sales team? Like, I'd love your thoughts on like yep. when you have the, the capital to make more strategic investments, where do you think you make this process better? I'm very interested in finding ways to make uh, the whole process more effective for for some of those people where the referral is more complicated or a little a little bit tougher. So, if you have a smaller number of like large enterprise clients, if you have a client base where it's a very long sales cycle and it, it's just a much more complicated sale, sometimes asking for referrals from them is is, is more difficult. You may want to ask them to send a permission based sort of message to somebody in their network, and that permission-based message might say something to the effect of, hey, we've been working uh, with, with warm-up and uh, they've done great work for us over the last 12 months. Here's a case study. Here's a link to a video about them. You know, Essentially, how do we help arm people to make uh, permission-based referrals for some, of these, uh, for the, some of these people who want referrals, but it's a much more complicated ask versus you know what the ticket sales rep is doing for the baseball I, team. Yeah, I love I love that. It's it's the number one way if I tell somebody I will give them a referral mm-hmm. is I then go ask permission. 
uh, first rather than just right. flood somebody's inbox with intros. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like there's there's a time and a place for everything, right? So like what we're finding is that there is a lot of companies where asking for an introduction at the end of the sales cycle uh, in an automated sort of way, it works really well. And it just adds a whole other predictable stream of new deals to the pipeline. And then there are other companies where it doesn't work quite as well because the ask needs to be more nuanced, like what you're talking about. So, you know, maybe the maybe the permission-based email that you send out sends this person that you're trying to refer to a landing page, right? And then they can interact with something at that landing page. And then, you know, at that point, then it becomes a lead, right? Uh, and you can still count that as a referral, but it's different than the way it works for the ticket sales rep. There's a lot of integrations and things like that from a technology standpoint that I think would be really interesting that if you understand if you understand some of the data around the people that you're asking for referrals, right? If you understand their personality and, and if you personalize things a little bit more, that could be helpful. There's just there's just a lot of things out there that we could integrate into the platform. We haven't done a lot of those yet because you know, I didn't feel like our customer base was big enough yet to really understand what is what is a common thread across all of yeah. them. And I didn't want to just build anything in that we're kind of getting we're getting to the point now where like I should probably stop implementing things that I think is a good idea. Right. Now we've got people riding the bike. So I'm trying to pull them. For me personally, it's kind of been a learning process to figure out how do I ask those questions in a way that gets the right kind of information out of them. Right. If I can ask you a challenging question. What makes warm up its own standalone product and not just a feature of larger CRM system like Salesforce or HubSpot or something like that? It's a great question. I don't think that the right answer is to talk about the kind of technology that we've made or, or built or will build. I think it's much more around understanding that asking for referrals is in and of itself its own its own outbound activity. So I'm encouraging folks to think about it as something similar to email outbound activity or making calls. Uh, Referrals needs to be treated as the third leg on the stool. There's a lot of nuances around how and when you should ask for referrals, understanding the process that should be used based on the company you work for and the industry that you operate in. And we're, we're going to be able to build off of those nuances. We've developed a lot of soft IP already around the industries that we're helping and the customers that we're helping because everybody's process looks a little bit different. And we're starting to see some common threads in sports and entertainment and also in uh, in the software sector as well around how and when they ask for referrals. And so it's complicated enough and it's nuanced enough that as the third leg on that outbound activity stool, we believe that we can build a standalone product that is that adds a lot of value and creates another predictable stream of revenue in a way that deserves to be its own its own thing. Do all of your customers use Salesforce? Do you have other customers with different CRM systems and or customers without a CRM system? We do. We uh, Early on, we took on a number of customers that did not use Salesforce. And for the most part, the majority of those customers are asking their existing customer base with warm-up. So one of the things that um, I think I maybe mentioned earlier in the podcast, but it, what we noticed early on is that people sometimes had hundreds of customers and they didn't weren't asking them for referrals at all throughout the year, which we thought was unfortunate for them. And so we, even though they weren't using Salesforce, even though we couldn't help them automatically ask at the end of every sales cycle, uh, we could help them export their existing list of customers and load those in and make sure that they were asking all of them once a year. And so there's a lot of people using the platform today that don't use Salesforce uh, we feel like we're adding a good amount of value for them because if you have, like we have one higher education customer that they had a hundred customers, they use warm up to ask them for referrals. They generated 30 referrals, Oof. which was great for them. It's great. That, I mean, they had a really long sales cycle that lasted 12 to 16 months. So for them, and they had a really hard time filling the top of the funnel. Uh, so that's a common thread across most of our customers is that they have pain filling the top of the funnel. Sometimes they are operating in a niche industry or just uh, there's some constraints there either geographically or um, because of their product or service. And so, you know, we feel like we can add value for people even if they're not using Salesforce. 
And when you think of warm up as a product that you're taking to market, do you think of it? Do you think of yourself as building a sales led organization or a marketing led organization? Meaning, do you think you're going to get most of your customers by you picking up the phone or a sales team, right? Which right now is you picking up the phone and, and talking to people? Or do you think it's I'm finding your product? I'm going to your website. I'm clicking sign up and swiping the credit card and going. I'm a, because I've been in sales my whole career, I, uh, I'm going to go with what I know to get started, right? So we're certainly going to have a heavy focus on outbound here over the next year. And I think we always will, right? Because we always want to eat our own cooking. And so, you know, well over half of our own deals have come from referrals and, uh, you know, well, well over half of our opportunities in the pipeline have come from referrals. And so, uh, you know, we'll continue to to heavily focus on outbound because it's me doing sales, right, for the for the foreseeable future. But I've been very pleasantly surprised by the ability for us to generate inbound leads. So I, every month, I try to do at least two marketing activities, whether that's a guest blog post or it's a podcast or a video video interview or something fun like that. You know, every month for the last six months, we've generated a couple of inbound leads, which. You know, I made the I made the marketing website, and I'm a sales guy. So if that tells you anything, I'm really proud of the fact that we've been able to generate a couple of inbound leads. I would love to see the cost of customer acquisition decrease, right, by focusing more on marketing. So we're very interested in trying to figure out what that looks like. I would love to have a version of the product that people could onboard themselves onto. Right today, there's some. There's a sales touch, right? There's an onboarding touch. Yeah, uh, so if you, that's you know. super common for an early stage company. Right? Don't don't think <laughs> about that. We actually uh, talk about that as uh, as a strategy, uh, and part of it it's it goes back to what you said as uh, as you just got customers on the bicycle. You want to see how they ride. If somebody is self servicing, right. you can't see that, right? right? Like, yep. So your ability to help somebody on board, ask them a bunch of questions, see their data, like you're learning through that process as well, right? Like how yes. many times do you need to cost, talk to a customer when you say, right. hey, give me your list of past customers. And they look at you and say, hmm, what? What, li- <laughs> what list? Do you have companies who keep that in a list somewhere? And it's like, okay, check. We need a different self-onboarding process. You know what I mean? Like you just learn yeah. so much through that process. That, right. So I, I think that's a great strategy for anybody getting started. Even if you could have somebody self-service in many B2B contexts, I think that can sometimes be a mistake because you're making a bunch of assumptions about who your customer is in that process that may or may not be true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so easy to make assumptions and that's a very dangerous thing to do. All right. So when you're selling in the market, are, how often are you selling against another solution and i know you said you have people who are like hey i i could do this myself and then you steer the conversation for to why aren't you but like right. are you ever coming up against a nudge or a you know some other product out there or is it is it just an education on like hey man you should be doing referrals we can help you do that and it, and they're not looking at other tools it, you know i'm i'm often not running the competitors so i you know i go back and forth between feeling like that's a bad thing and thinking it's a good thing. So I often don't run into competitors. When I talk to sales teams, whether it's at a, whether it's at a, you know, whether it's a baseball team, a professional sports organization, or it's a software product company on the West coast, right. That's growing like gangbusters. The the most, I, I rarely run into anybody who says, Oh, we already asked for referrals at the end of every sales cycle, or we already ask our customer base for referrals. The bottom line is I think that they, it's not, um, this is going to sound bad on the service, but it's just not, they don't think of it as a priority right off the bat. And so it's kind of through the sales cycle that they often realize that they're leaving a lot of, a lot of revenue on the table. And they also slowly open up to me that they're seeing a lot of activity, but not a lot of effective activity on the sales side, or they're not making enough revenue fast enough, right? So they start to understand that this is a thing we're not doing. It rolls up into one of our most important initiatives or one of our most critical pain points today. And maybe it's a great way to to actually address the problem. I I actually had a conversation last week that I thought was wonderful because I asked the VP of sales to go look at all the deals they closed last year and tell me where those deals came from. And they discovered that their largest deal of the year actually came through referral, which for them kind of helped validate and give them some evidence that you know, this, this, this is a good activity. This is a good activity. It yeah. does work. We should do more of it. Um, and then it just becomes about 
you know, okay, well, if we want to do more of it, how do we do more of it? And how do I, how do I hold my team accountable to do more of it? All right, man, if people want to learn more about warm up or if they want to get in touch with you directly, how do they do that? Uh, feel free to email me. It's just Mike at sendwarmup.com, or you can go to our website, sendwarmup.com. There's a opportunity on the site to request a demo. Happy to, happy to set up a time to do that with folks and, uh, talk, talk with you more about how we can help you. Thanks, man. Thanks. If you're thinking of launching a SaaS product, startup competitors can provide data on your closest competitors, survey potential users, or provide other product validation services. Learn more at startupcompetitors.com.